Good morning, Gadsden Middle School. I am William Roberts, your SGA president. Jason Wilson is serving his first term as councilman for District 5. Please welcome Councilman Wilson. Good morning, guys. Well, thank you for, for inviting me to be a part of this. You guys are in a unique situation right now where you're, some of you are about to enter one of the most challenging periods of your life, which is uh, the transition to high school. As you look towards the summer, I want to encourage you to fail, okay? Uh, you've been taught your whole life that failure is a bad thing. And I'm here to tell you that the only time failure is a bad thing is if you don't learn from it. Every day at the dinner table, my dad would say, have you failed today? And I would have to tell him about something that I tried and it didn't work out and what I learned from it. So the only time failure is a bad thing is if you don't learn from it. But change your mindset about failure and look at it as an opportunity. Go out and try something new. Um, at this point, I'll let the, the uh, students introduce our next speaker. I'm excited to be here uh, to hear him. One great thing is a movement to promote individual change and mindset shift to achieve successful relationships and a happy life. Mr. Sanders developed the concept and wrote a 35-page book of the same title based on, on his experience studying and practicing self-help and personal growth for over 40 years. His message to change your attitude is simple yet powerfully motivated by his desire to influence a generation of children, youth, and young adults to use their imagination to change the world, save the future, and create a better place for everyone. Born and raised in Gaston, Alabama. He graduated from Carver High School and attended Gadsden State Community College. Mr. Sandridge is an American painter, sculptor, illustrator, author, educator, inventor, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. He is notably recognized as the first and only black licensed during the early 1990s by the Coca-Cola Company to incorporate African American themes in their artwork and being selected as a commissioned sculptor by the 1996 Summer Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. John Solomon Sandridge. Good morning. How are you? Good, 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 good. It's an honor to be here in your school with you this morning. I taught art in the Gaston City School System for a while. And as stated, I grew up in Gaston, Alabama. And I'm here to share a message with you this morning. Anything is possible, but everything is not easy. I don't know what you're going through in your personal lives. I don't know what's going on in your homes. I don't know what you're having to deal with, but I can share with you what I dealt with. I lived in a three-room house with my mother, my father, and my seven brothers and sisters. It was eight of us, 10 of us living in a three-room house. It was the most serious poverty. And what was worse than that? I'm not asking for sympathy, but I wanna share this with you. My father was a, a in the closet alcoholic and he was a truck driver so he was gone most of the time and it was on the weekends when we would see him when he came home now my mother had to take care of all eight of the kids and my mother was young and mean I could walk through the house and feel a fist hitting me in the back of my head, or in my back, or in my chest, or I was being kicked by my mother. This went on for years. It was absolutely awful. At age 15 is when my mother stopped that. And from that point on, my mother and I had the best relationship a mother and a son could have. I loved her. There was nothing my mother could do that would keep me from loving her. And I would buy something special for her and hide it to give it to her. Yes, that's what I did. Why? Because she was my mother and because I loved her. And also, it wasn't until I was an adult 
that I knew what my mother had gone through. I don't have any proof, but I think my mother was raped. I know my mother was beaten the way she beat me. That's all. My, my point is this. All that I went through, I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a scientist. I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be a brain surgeon. I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be a comedian. I wanted to be a cartoonist. I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to do all of these things is what I had in my mind to do. And I was determined that I was going to do what I wanted to do. I was determined I wasn't going to live and die in poverty. I was determined what happened to me was not going to prevent me from being who God created me to be. I was, I was not going to allow anyone or anything to stop me from reaching my goals. When I was 15 years old, I decided I wanted to be a cartoonist. Never had any art lessons in my life, 15 years old. Never had any art lessons. I created some cartoons, sent them to a magazine in Montgomery, Alabama. They published the cartoons in a Sunday weekly magazine. My mother, my father, my brothers and sisters, the teacher at school, they had no idea what I was doing. I was considered one of the dumbest kids in the school. I was picked on by the other kids. But I was determined to do what I wanted to do and to be what I felt God created me to be. That painting right there, that first painting on the end is a painting of my sister. Again, living in poverty, not having money, and didn't have canvas, I took a bed sheet, old bed sheet, and a picture frame, electrical tape, taped a piece of uh, uh, the bed sheet onto the frame and painted a portrait of my sister. Never had any art lessons. I had determination. And guess what else I had? I had the right attitude. It's all about attitude. It doesn't matter whether you have a lot of skill or not. It doesn't matter whether you have the education or not. What's most important is your attitude. If you have that determined attitude, you can accomplish anything you want to accomplish, especially you today. You are living in a time when there is more opportunity that has ever existed in the world. You can do anything beyond your imagination. Now, this painting here, this is a painting I created. I didn't have any art lessons, like I said. I went to the Birmingham Museum of Art and there was a traveling exhibit, the Zorn exhibit, and there was an artist named Zorn. He had painted this painting, and his painting was hanging on the wall. I went to the director of the museum and asked him if I could bring my easels and my paint to the museum in Birmingham, Alabama, to copy that painting. He said yes. No one had ever done it in Birmingham, Alabama, in their museum. I was the first. I was the first African-American with Coca-Cola to make history with Coca-Cola. I've done a lot of firsts. I'm the first artist who has ever invented and trademarked an art style in the history of art. No other artist has done that. I'm the only one who can create numinous neoism art. This painting, Nelson Mandela, a hero, after all he went through and went to prison for all the years he was in prison, his attitude when he came out was he was going to make a difference. He did not hate those who imprisoned him. He did not hate those who held him as captive, as a captive in prison. It's all about your attitude. And that's what this book is about. I need The point is this, the point is this, you want to have something that's going to help you develop your attitude to accomplish your goal. Your goals are not going to just happen because you have a goal. Your goals are not going to happen just because you go to school and because you get a degree. There are a lot of individuals who have degrees and they're not living their dream. Your dream will come true no matter what it is. The possibility, the potential is there. 
because of you. You are the only one that can make your dream come true. Your teachers can do all they can do. Your principal can do all that he can do. Your parents can do all they can do. The world can be what it can be, right? Attitude. Your attitude will determine whether you will succeed or whether you will fail, not your circumstances. My circumstances didn't mold my life. Whatever you're going through, don't allow that to deter you from any dreams you may have. That my attitude was what was allowing me to succeed. I thank you for allowing me to be here this morning. And I want to say once more, you can accomplish anything you set your mind to. And I'm from your hometown, Gaston, Alabama, and I grew up in poverty. And I have traveled so much and met so many wonderful people, it's mind boggling. You can be greater than what you think with the right, with the right what? With the right attitude. Give yourselves a hand. All right, again, we want to, uh, of course, Councilman uh, Wilson had to leave, but we want to thank him for being here and bringing us a little word today. And, of course, uh, Mr. Sandridge, first of all, for donating a book to each and every one of you. He gave you a book for free. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank him for that. Thank you. And, of course, just the message that he brought us today about, you know, you changing your attitude you controlling your destiny, it's all up to you. You make out a life what you put into it. Very much. Let's give Ms. Sandridge another round of applause. Thank you. Whatever you're going through, don't allow that to deter you from any dreams you may have.